Commissioner, can you just open up and tell us what your initial thoughts were when you got that phone call? Uh, yeah, when, when the uh, Australian of the Year Council uh, representative rang me, um, I had to double check that it was someone uh, that wasn't just so having a lend of me, um, one of my staff members trying to be funny, and it uh, turns out it was a genuine phone call, so I was pretty overwhelmed. And I, the other thing I had to check was whether it was for Australian of the Year or Senior Australian of the Year. So, <laughs> very grateful that I'm not quite yet considered to be in that category. Can I ask you what Emma said? Yeah, she was amazed, blown away. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it really came out of left field, didn't expect it. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah, you can't help but feel honoured that people have thought to recommend or nominate me as a, a, a candidate for Australia of the Year. What do you hope to bring to that role if you get it? Um, you can't deny the fact that um, if you were to be successful in this space, it gives you a platform to um, get a really strong message across. And obviously, um, there's a lot of important issues that I have um, a stake, stake in, and one of those being road safety. So being able to magnify that message and hopefully change people's perspectives about um, how they use our roads and thinking about other people who use the roads and the consequences of uh, not getting that right is something I would certainly take advantage of. Commissioner, is that a difficult conversation to, to keep having or is it something that you can pour yourself um, into? It depends on how you're feeling on the day. Every single day, uh, Emma and I and our, our children and close family there are times of sadness, um, and I think there always will be, but you know, we've made the choice to keep moving forward um, and to try and be positive about life. We've got four other children and two grandchildren, so they're a really important part of our life, and we want them to enjoy life as well. So, um, but we do like talking about Charlie as well, and you know, what we've experienced, given my role, um, it's given me a perspective on the, the consequences of not making good decisions on the road that um, I never had before. I wish I didn't have that perspective, but it's given me some insights to understand uh, exactly what families go through when they lose uh, one of their members, one of the family members. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's no longer just words on a piece of paper when you stand up and talk about the consequences of um, people losing their lives on the road. How do you think Charlie would have felt to hear this news himself? Uh, he probably would have thought it should have been him, <laughs> for whatever reason, but he would have, um, yeah, he's, uh, he was a good boy. So yeah. just, just going back to when you said that you thought it was like a prank call from one of your co-workers, do you get prank calls from your co-workers all the time? Uh, look, <laughs> I, one of the requirements to work in my office area is that you've got to be pretty relaxed about things, and if you're not prepared to have a good time, then maybe find somewhere else to work. So. It wouldn't have surprised me to find that out. What so, other prank calls have you uh, Some of them can't be spoken about. So, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there is a possibility that I might make more than I receive. So, yeah. How do you make that transition between Grant Stevens, the police commissioner, and Grant Stevens, the dad? Uh, we're the same person. Um, and I've, I've always sought to um, be myself in this role. Um, I, I don't... I might put on a specific uniform to come to work, but I don't put on a mask to do my job. I'm, what you see is what you get. This is Grant Stevens. I might look serious certain, during certain press conferences, but um, that might be a bit of a, a look for the particular event. But um, yeah, I, I go about my job as Grant Stevens. There's no distinction between uh, my personal life and private life in terms of how I behave. Are you proud of that nomination? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's um, it's it's really came out of the blue. Um, and I, I think I've said before, like, um, my wife and I appreciate the support we've had from the South Australian community uh, and the people who approach me in the street or wherever I am um, pass on their regards. You know, there's, I, I have a sense that people respect the work I do and certainly they have demonstrated their, their thoughts for my family. But uh, it, to be nominated like this is certainly something I would never have expected. And what would it mean to you to actually be named officially Australian of the Year next year? Um, I reckon that's getting ahead of our, ourselves here. Um, remember, I'm, I've been nominated along with a, a professor, a rocket scientist and a doctor who does cancer research. So, you know, that's, that's fairly high level company and uh, I think they're all incredibly worthy people. So we'll take it one step at a time. Do you know who nominated you? Beg your pardon? Do you know who nominated No, I have no idea. And, um, it's um, it's like a lot of those things. I don't think it's uh, I don't think you ever find out who's nominated. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, 
didn't expect it. Um, privileged to have been nominated, and uh, if, if there was an opportunity to use that uh, position um, to continue providing really positive messages and getting people to, um, well, having the opportunity for people to hear that message more clearly, then I'll take that opportunity. Last question, guys. I know it's probably bittersweet, but are you doing anything to celebrate, perhaps, this nomination? Uh, no, I think it's just, um, you know, well, I've known for a, a few weeks now, oh. so, um, and I was able to tell my immediate family, so, yeah, we've... Couldn't talked. tell us, really? <laughs> um, I can keep some secrets, so, um, it's, um, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was overwhelming to be told, but I've had a, a little bit of time to process it, and, uh, and so is my family, yeah. And the reaction from the rest of the family? Very proud, yeah. Proud of their dad, and Emma's obviously proud, but, um, uh, yeah, this, this element that, uh, is incorporated in the nomination that relates to, um, how we've chosen to go forward having lost Charlie, um, oh, look, I, a, a huge amount of that credit goes to Emma. Um, she, she, she's the strong one of the tours. Um, she's the one that's really pushed some of these things that we've been able to achieve, uh, in terms of building some awareness, um, organ donation, Operation Flinders Foundation, um, that's all about Emma. So she's she she deserves uh, as much recognition as me. I think. And is it important that um, we've spoken about this before? Any anger or whatever you may have felt, um, have ma managed to put that aside and then channel what's happened in a, in a positive way. Um, there's no anger. Um, yeah, we, we don't have our son anymore. Um, that first never going to change. Um, um, I know other people have different emotions about uh, what's happened, and I fully respect that. But uh, from our point of view, it's not about being angry. But those, Thank you. those negative emotions have gone channeled into into positive ones. Uh, I try and maintain a positive outlook on life, no matter what sort of hurdles you have to confront. Um, you have two choices every time you get, every time you face a difficult situation, and you know that choice dictates how you feel about yourself and how you deal with other people. And I'd rather be positive than negative. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.